People suffering ruptured eardrums might eventually get relief in the form of an eardrum made from silk. Australian researchers have been granted funds for clinical trials of an ear implant which incorporates silk. Dr Rangam Rajkawa is one of the researchers behind the silk eardrum and he joins me now from Melbourne. Dr Rajkawa, welcome. How did you come up with silk as an appropriate material? Uh, silk uh, is used uh, a, as in the form of a surgical trait for a long time. It's biocompatible and we could convert the silk into a very, very fine, thin, transparent membrane and suitable for this, uh, this particular applications. So we have worked with the ESN Institute Australia. So they were looking for the properties that we can get into this drum through our process. All right. So explain the device for us, um, how it's constructed and how it works. Uh, we, uh, when, when there's a big perforation in the eardrum and when, when it is uh, chronic, then it, it is not healed by itself. So normally what is done currently is uh, the surgeons uh, cut a piece of cartilage and put on the, on the eardrum. So the cartilage is thick, it cannot vibrate. So our eardrum is thin and we can sip into the eardrum. So it is, uh, it is vibrating in, in as, as like a normal eardrum. So the sound wave can be transmitted, the hearing outcome is good and it is strong enough to resist the negative pressure of the middle ear so that it can stand. And eventually over a period of time, it is biodegradable. So as the eardrum is regenerated, it will go away. Yeah. And, and, and because it is so transparent, we call it the clear drum. So, so the doctors can see through it like a contact lens. It is like a contact lens. So see through it and, 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 then, and then monitor the infections inside the ear. Right. And what sort of structure do you grow the silk on? Uh, we put it on the, under the eardrum and then the cells on the eardrum will grow because it can support the adhesion of the cells and that's how it helps to regenerate the, the, the original eardrum. Mm. And so what stage of the process, the trialling process, are you at with this at the moment? How, how do you know it works and how are you going to prove that it works more successfully? We have done uh, several years of studies and uh, initially at a lab scale. We have put it in the animal model studies and that have worked very well. And this, through this grant, we are going to develop the device uh, in, in, in the next year and we test it and validate it and the next two years we are going to put it on a human so it will be a part of a human clinical study. Wow and so how many people have issues with perforated eardrums and how does it happen is it only from infections or does it happen because of uh, like physically sometimes I know uh, people put kind of cotton buds so far in their ears uh, that they they perforate them as well is that right? Yeah you're right it can be for a variety of reasons uh, but but the but the infection is a major cause uh, for it. Uh, we have uh, we know that about 330 million people throughout the world have got a perforated eardrum. So in all cases, you may not require a surgery, but in large number of cases, uh, you know a, it has to be replaced uh, with with a cartilage, and that is where we can use this drum. And 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 I think it's a very very severe problem particularly with the children of, of the indigenous communities here yeah. because it's about more uh, less, I mean about 14% of the indigenous uh, uh, children suffer from the hearing problem uh, because of the perforated drum where in against about 3% of the non-indigenous -indi population here. And those, the eardrum is replaced for those people but they still, they don't uh, get the hearing back at the level they, they had hoped to? That's right because mm. the, currently the cartilage that they put is a very thick membrane yeah. And, and that it cannot vibrate, but, but the, this, ear, this eardrum is going to be so thin and we have tested in, in, in the condition and we can see that it can vibrate in the same frequency range. So it, can, it, it is able to transfer the sound waves uh, to, the, to the brain and, and we, we believe that, that it, it will give a much better hearing outcome. Yeah, that's fantastic news. Uh, good luck with your trials and thanks so much for, for bringing in an example for us as well. Uh, Rangnam uh, Rajkaur speaking to us there from Melbourne. Thank you. Thank you.